pH effects on solubility are going to be the topic of this lesson. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do DAT, OAT, and MCAT prep as well. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description for where you can find those courses. Now, this lesson is part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout the school year, so if you want to be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. So pH effects on solubility. And uh, in the last chapter, in the last lesson, we learned about salts that can be either acidic, basic, or neutral. And we had some rules for figuring out if a salt was going to be in one of those three categories. And it turns out that's going to be very important for this lesson. And so it turns out we talk about pH effects on solubility. It turns out that when you say have a basic salt, basic salts are, turns out, are more soluble when the solution is acidic, less soluble when the solution is basic. So same thing if you want to talk about acidic salts. It's the opposite, I guess you should say. Uh, for an acidic salt, they're more soluble when the solution is basic and less soluble when the solution is acidic. And then we have neutral salts. And it turns out for a neutral salt, their solubility is just not going to change whether you, you know, increase or decrease the pH. It totally doesn't matter. So cool. So that's the take home. So now we're going to spend a little time talking about why? So we're going to use barium fluoride as our textbook example. And uh, you might recall some rules from how we identify cations as being either acidic or negligible. Most cations are acidic. However, the group 1 and group 2 metal ions, or any transition metal, which I'll abbreviate here, uh, that's a plus 1 charge, like Ag+. Uh, we look at those as being negligible as well. But pretty much just about any other cation is going to be acidic. Anions, on their hand, tend to be basic, and the vast majority are basic, except for the conjugate bases of the strong acids. Most of those are negligible, with one exception again, and that's HSO4 minus, the conjugate base of H2SO4. And it turns out he's still a weak acid, so he's kind of the exception of all exceptions. As an anion, likely the only anion you're going to encounter that, that is actually still acidic. He's not the only one that exists, but probably the only one you're going to see. So when we take a look at barium fluoride, we should first identify as an acidic salt, a basic salt, or a neutral salt. And in this case, we can see that barium ions, being a group two metal ion, they're negligible. And so we'll just cross them off and ignore them. But fluoride as the anion, he's not in the negligible list. So, and he's going to be therefore basic in this case. And as a result, this is a basic salt. And it's the fluoride itself that is the base in this case. So if we take a look at the KSP reaction for barium fluoride, there it is. And we've, we've dealt with the common ion effect already. If I wanted to reduce the solubility of barium fluoride, I could add any strong electrolyte that either contains barium ions or fluoride ions, and adding it in would add either barium or fluoride, and it would shift this equilibrium back to the left meaning less dissolved solid and lower solubility. So that was the common ion effect. Well, what if I want to do the opposite? What if I want to increase the solubility here? And how do I do that? Well, let's just take a, a fictitious situation here. And let's just say that I've got a barium fluoride solution that's saturated at equilibrium. So, and in that solution, let's just say I have a magic formula that I say, and it turns all of the fluoride ions into frogs. Back. Let's do that in red here. So it converts all fluoride ions into frogs. Cool. Well, if I convert all the fluoride ions into frogs, then the system is no longer going to be at equilibrium anymore. And in this case, it's not going to have enough fluoride to be at equilibrium. And so as a result, more barium fluoride is going to have to dissolve to replenish the fluoride to get back to being at equilibrium. Now, how many of you guys think that I actually can turn fluoride ions into frogs by saying some, some magic words here? Yeah, not happening. However, I may not know how to turn fluoride ions into frogs, but I do know that fluoride ions are basic. And so rather than turning them into frogs, I know a chemical reaction they do. What do bases react with? Well, they react with acids. And so I'm going to add any acid, any source of H plus is what I'm going to add. And it's not going to turn the fluoride ions into frogs, but it will turn the fluoride ions into HF. And just the same, rather than turning the fluoride into frogs, I'm turning all the fluoride ions into HF. And if they're no longer fluoride ions, but are HF instead, well, then I don't have enough fluoride here to be at equilibrium, and more barium fluoride is going to have to dissolve to create more of that fluoride. And if more barium fluoride is dissolving, that means I've just increased the solubility of barium fluoride. 
And so as we can see with a basic salt like barium fluoride, adding any acid is gonna increase its solubility. So a couple different ways to look at this now. So notice we've dealt with acidic and basic and neutral salts. And it came up in the last chapter and it comes up in this one. You need to memorize how to identify these salts. So if you haven't done so already, super important here. It can show up under two totally different concepts and often on the same exam. Uh, so knowing this one concept here might actually get you multiple questions right. All right, so a couple things we should know. Barium fluoride is a basic salt. If you stick it in water, the pH is gonna go over seven. Okay, great. But we also just learned that when you have acid present, and that could mean you add acid, or it could just mean that for who knows why the, acidic, the, the, the solution is acidic, whether it's buffered at some low pH or who knows why, but it's an acidic solution. So if I were to put barium fluoride in pure water in one case, and then barium fluoride in an acidic solution where the pH is less than seven, in a second case, more of the barium fluoride is going to dissolve in that acidic solution. And we can now see why. Now on the other side though, and the one that students struggle to see is what if I put barium fluoride in a third beaker in a basic solution? Well, it turns out not as much as is gonna dissolve now as compared to say the, the, the neutral solution or the acidic solution. And, and a lot of students look at this and be like, well, why Chad, why is that? Well, let's take a look at why. So it turns out what you've really got going on here with that barium fluoride, if you actually got multiple equilibria going on because fluoride is a base and what do bases do? Well, they react with water to produce some hydroxide and the conjugate acid. And so in this case, you've got the barium fluoride dissociating to produce barium and fluoride ions, but then you have some of those fluoride ions you just produced, so reacting with water to form hydroxide and HF. And so what happens when you have a basic solution? Well, a basic solution has more hydroxide than a neutral solution or an acidic solution. And having more hydroxide, that's gonna shift this equilibrium back to the left, producing more fluoride. Well, if you have more fluoride, well, having more fluoride shifts this equilibrium back to the left, meaning you have less dissolved solid and a lower solubility. So hard to explain it without looking at both equilibria and the impact of one on the other, but that's the deal. Basic solutions have more hydroxide, more hydroxide is gonna shift the equilibrium of the acid-base reaction here back to the left forming more fluoride, and more fluoride is gonna shift this equilibrium back towards the solid, meaning less dissolved solid in that solution. And so now you understand why basic salts are more, sol more soluble in acidic solutions, less soluble in basic solutions. Uh, and it works the exact opposite. If we had an acidic salt, the acidic salts are more soluble in basic solutions, less soluble in acidic solutions. So, and then finally again, neutral salts, their solubility is largely pH independent, doesn't matter. So common questions on this is you might be given, you know, multiple choice question where you've got five different salts there and you might have to identify which one would be more soluble in an acidic solution. So, and you'd be picking a basic salt. Which one would be more soluble in a basic solution? You'd be picking an acidic salt. Or you might get a question that says, which of the following uh, would have a pH that is, you know, or would have a solubility that's largely unaffected by a change in the pH. And in that case, you'd be looking for a neutral salt. And if you found this lesson helpful, the thumbs up button is pretty much the best thing you can do to support the channel. And if you are looking for Gen Chem practice or the study guides that go with these lessons or final exam rapid reviews and practice final exams, then check out my general chemistry master course. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. A free trial is available. Happy studying.